The Pocophone M3 is a budget-friendly phone that costs just $129. Though it has one of the biggest batteries I've ever seen in this price segment, it has a lackluster LCD panel and a plastic back. But how does it fare up in a teardown? What is inside of this guy and how hard is it for me to open him up? Well, that back plastic for starters is pretty weak, so if you scrape it against something such as a door frame, you're definitely going to notice some scuffs. On the side, we have a plastic frame. I guess you could kind of call it a mid frame, but it's not really that. And yes, it scratches quite a fair bit too. But what about the inside components? Are they made of metal? Are they made of plastic? How does this phone put together and how is it built? I'm really excited to do my first teardown on the channel. This is Technic and without further ado, let's go. Picking up the phone, we can see the camera module at the top and that is glass, but the little frame next to it that says Poco is definitely plastic and scratches quite a fair bit. However, the frame of the camera lens is metal, so that's nice. Of course, before we take things further, it's probably a good idea to power off the device as well as pop out that SIM tray, which is indeed a dual SIM. Now let's go ahead and wedge a couple things between the mid frame and the, okay, there goes my ceramic knife broken in half. Thanks for that, Poco M3. I guess you're a bit tougher than expected. After applying some more heat to get rid of that adhesive that is gluing the phone together, we managed to pop off the back plate. Once we get that back plate nice and off, we can see the inside of the the phone which doesn't actually show that much since we have to take off a couple protectors. Nevertheless it's nice and neat inside and I seem to have cut off the fingerprint sensor cable over there connecting it to the main board. As you can see with the back plate we have some large graphite film at the top over here to keep things nice and cool in terms of that connection between the Wi-Fi GPS signal connectors. And moving on to that fingerprint sensor which we accidentally sliced in half it's not going to be able to work anymore but this is how you would usually use it and of course we have the volume rocker just above that which isn't connected to anything since it just uses buttons. We have 17 Phillips screws to unscrew at the back of the phone in order to get to the main board as well as the subboard. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And for a smartphone company that's moving away from Xiaomi, there seems to be quite a bit of Xiaomi branding around. Getting the housing off of the main board over here, we can see the camera lens. Flipping it to the back, we do get welcomed to some little rubbers to seal some water, I guess you could say. And we do have the headphone jack rubber there as well. And we have the LED flash cover. Here is the copper tape covering the thermal paste on top of the processor and here is the RAM and ROM. We have Wi-Fi and GPS signal connectors which rest on the back of the back plates over here which touch base with each other there and we have an earpiece at the top of the phone which doubles up as a second firing speaker for dual audio. Time to disconnect the battery connector from the main board and the LCD flex plug display connector over here. Now to remove the speaker assembly at the bottom of the phone here is the back of the speaker assembly which we have a mesh protector which covers the vibration motor and this is the main downward firing speaker and we have a little rubber protection unit over there to prevent water from getting in. Now to disconnect the subboard flex cable we have the microphone at the bottom of the phone we have the second microphone at the top but next to the bottom microphone we have a circular vibration motor here's the top microphone let's pop out the 2 megapixel depth sensor as well as the 48 megapixel Samsung GM2 lens which is the main camera the macro sensor is connected underneath the main board we'll get that in a second and now to unplug the antenna wire on the right of the device getting that home free it's finally time to remove the poco m3's best trait the massive 6000 milliamp hour battery We get a massive 6,000 milliamp hour battery, but after a while of discharge cycles, the battery could drop below its rated capacity. Since the device units vary in production, the phone will have a battery capacity between its rate and its typical. Now to pull out the eight megapixel selfie camera and to move on to the fingerprint sensor connector, which we accidentally broke off earlier. And there is metal within the phone, but not the aluminum that we see in most flagships. It's more of a cheap, soft alloy. Now we can remove the motherboard over here in which we can 
can get a closer look at the copper tape and thermal paste hidden underneath. We have the Snapdragon 662 processing chip and we have the RAM and ROM on the right hand side of that. We can now pull off the two megapixel macro sensor nice and carefully. And the macro sensor looks about the same size as the selfie camera. None of the cameras have any form of optical or digital stabilization. However, the main sensor does have phase detection, autofocus, which is nice. Here is the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which we only seem to find in budget phones these days. And here is a closer look at the Snapdragon 662 chipset run on 11 nanometer process known technology, as well as a slit showing off the RAM and storage modules. There is also some extra thermal paste we find at the back of the main board, which helps better heat dissipation. At the back of the motherboard, we also find the SIM tray socket, which is dual SIM and supports micro SD cards up to 512 gigs of expansion. We also get treated to an infrared blaster at the top of the board. And this little patch here is where the macro sensor rests its head. Under the main board, we find some more soft alloy. And now it's time to disconnect the other side of the antenna wire so that we can gain access to the sub board. But first, let's disconnect that display cable. Removing the rubber mesh surrounding the type C port, we gain access to the sub board. And here is that type C port, which allows up to 18 watt charging speeds and lackluster USB 2.0 transfer speeds. Here is where the fingerprint sensor and volume rocker usually sits. They don't seem to be staying there at the moment. The IPS LCD display is protected by Gorilla Glass 3, which prevents minimal scratches, but is certainly prone to some deeper cuts. There is plastic coating protecting the edges of the display. And now it's time to heat up the adhesive that keeps the screen in place. There's not much of a mid frame here, which makes it pretty tough to remove the display, but we seem to be doing a fine job, especially for a first time on the channel here, with a Technic Teardown. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. As of that display, the Poco M3 uses an IPS LCD screen, which is made up of an outer protective layer made of glass, some polarizing layers to help the crystal layer deliver the correct light. Then there's the liquid crystal layer itself, which controls the colors and picture displayed. And finally, we have the backlight, which seems to brighten up to a peak of about 480 nits. And there is some thin alloy holding things together behind the screen. All of these layers kind of remind me of the leaflets we get inside of the box of a phone. And I think it's safe to say this phone is done for in terms of being put back together. Holding the display itself makes me wish phones were this thin. And behind the display, we are welcome to a big graphite pad, which helps dissipate the heat generated by all that light. And of course we get some more soft alloy under that. And the other side around as well. The Poco M3 was a tough nut to crack getting into that nitty gritty hardware underneath its display and behind its back plates. I think it is made of materials that well surpass its $129 price tag, which gives me a proper thumbs up. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. A sub to the channel would be fantastic. This is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.